Hey friends, apologies for my obvious voice cold here. It's not like this throughout the video. I was actually filming the video for my first impressions of this Apple Studio display, so if you are interested, definitely subscribe to see that. But I took a quick break from doing some filming stuff and jumped on Twitter and saw that Moment had just posted that this bag is actually on sale for only $99. Uh, even the Fujifilm version and the six liter and the 10 liter, there's a bunch of options um, and it's only 99 bucks. So I promise this isn't a paid or sponsored video or anything. It just happened to be that I saw it uh, and wanted to share it with you before they sell out. I don't think I have a problem. Do I have a, do I have a problem? Does this look problematic to you? This is normal, right? Yeah. Hey everyone, my name is Ben Chaish. I have been a professional photographer for well over a decade, and these are just some of my camera bags. So since there are so many different use cases for photography and for me as a wedding and elopement photographer and someone who just loves to do this, on a daily basis. As I was just kind of rearranging my office, I realized that each of these bags obviously didn't have a specific video tied to them. But also as someone who clearly loves camera bags, I'm always just kind of looking out for what's out there and what different small little things can be solved by some different bags. I find that both the amount of stuff you can carry as well as the speed and usefulness in which you can, you know, get things in and out of them is super important. So we're going to try to go over all those things and not necessarily compare all of them or tell you which bag is the best, but hopefully in going through them, you know, we'll see which one might be best for you. And since you may or may not be interested in all these in particular, uh, I'll put the timestamps down below and then you can obviously check for current pricing as sometimes that kind of stuff changes a lot. So the links to all these in the order that they show up will be in the description in case you kind of just want to jump down there and uh, I don't know, cheat this video. All right, so I'm just gonna take the bags off the table real quick and then we can jump into each one individually. So the first bag I have here is the Ona Leather Brixton. This bag I've had since it probably came out, basically. As you can tell, it is just like beat to shreds. I probably, actually probably, I definitely have never conditioned it. And only in the last maybe year or so, it's started to get to where it's getting dry and stuff in here. And so I probably do need to pick up some leather conditioner. Um, it has a pretty hard bottom, so depending on what you have in there, it can stand up, but it often does like to fall that way. So, you know, one of my complaints about this bag is I do wish it had some sort of support in the back um, of some kind, because you can tell that as it sort of has formed to my body over the years, uh, it, it definitely leans. And so when you have stuff in there, especially in the front pockets, then you can kind of end up having a front heavy bag. As you can see, it's kind of caved in a little bit here, which when you're carrying it feels great, um, but then you put it down and it'll often kind of do a little bit of this. So that's honestly my only complaint about this entire bag. It fits a like 14 inch MacBook Pro on the inside and I've used this in completely various uses, whether I've just shoved all my cameras in here and then packed lenses or I just use it for lenses. Um, these front pouches are really good. It's been to so, on like so many plane flights and it's just been like the thing that I've brought everywhere. I'll unload my camera stuff out of it and take it on a weekend away. Uh, I'll walk around the city with it. I'll put a laptop in here and a couple things and I'll take it to a coffee shop. Like it's just the bag that if I had to probably get rid of the rest of the bags in here, this is the bag I would want. And I always said that even though it was expensive, I think this bag when I got it was like $400 or something. It's just one of those things that I just decided that I was gonna spend the money, I was going to get something that was going to last, and this bag absolutely has lasted. I just honestly couldn't recommend it any more than I already have. The only thing that has ever been an issue here are these little clasps. There's obviously some sort of a spring in here that kind of bumps those back up. Those have failed on me twice, but I have just emailed Ona and then they have sent me new ones. It's just a nice bag. It's not enormous and it's something that I've carried 
a ridiculous amount of days. And as obviously someone who has not taken care of this bag, uh, I feel like it has held up incredibly well. There's like blood stains on here. It's just a great daily carry, camera bag, all that stuff, travel bag. I couldn't be more stoked on this. And although it looks like it's like 80 years old, uh, it's probably eight years old and I'm more than fine with that. And we're on that Ona bags train. This is the leather Bowery. This was a special edition that they did like for Leica. I don't think it was like an actual Leica thing because it doesn't have a Leica logo on it. Um, and I had the original Bowery and then because I love Leica cameras and everything, Ona offered to send me this one. So the only real difference is that it has this red dot right here. And then the inside, instead of being a gray color, is this red color, which I don't know, just looks really cool. And is kind of like a nice little homage to Leica cameras. And obviously for just like kind of a day out, you know, just grab a camera and a lens and toss your keys and stuff in there. It just ends up being a nice bag for that. You still have these front little pouches similar to the other bag. Um, and it's obviously just great leather. You have the side pouches. It's basically just like a mini version of that Brixton bag. Um, and because it has, you know, the Leica stuff and they don't make this anymore, it's kind of like a special little bag to me in that way. Now this bag is really, really similar in size, but just, you know, slightly bigger in some ways. Um, obviously it's not leather, but it's this really nice, like canvasy material with some leather accents, I guess, to it. Uh, this bag is from a company called Satchel and Page, and this is their, their camera bag. It's really, really nice as well. I have found that this is a great bag that if I wanna bring a little bit more than that Ona bag, it fits an 11 inch iPad Pro just like perfectly in this back section right here. It definitely has just a little bit more room in those regards. It has this front zip section, which is really nice. And it also just is like kind of malleable, but has like a good form to it where a lot of bags haven't held their form as well. And this one I've had for about a year and a half now and has done a pretty good job of holding its form there. I also really appreciate that the inside pieces are very modular and that you get different sizes of the dividers. And then there's just a lot of the kind of like Velcro material and whatnot around. And so honestly, I don't think that was, again, their intended use, but if you are someone that likes to travel around and maybe go for a day out with an iPad, uh, and you have an 11 inch, this has worked perfectly and been a really, really cool bag for that kind of, you know, everyday carry situation. All right, and as the most sort of like techie looking bag that I have, this is the Moment, I think it's like the rugged sling bag, but it's a sort of collaboration that they did with Fujifilm. So kind of another one of those cool bags that is, I guess, a little bit more customed out and I guess like a special edition. So uh, I will link whatever version that they have still available. I know they make this in like an olive color and then obviously black or gray-ish. But this is a cool bag because it's a little bit different as it is kind of more like a sling bag. It's one of those bags where uh, I do a lot of biking. And so it's a nice bag that you kind of wear like this and then you can bring it around, do your stuff here, then flip it back around. And obviously it fits me terribly because I'm sitting down. It's kind of like more of a city bag, I guess. The nice part is it's big, but it's not big, right? So this is the 10 liter model, which is obviously a little bit bigger. Um, and so it has just a lot of space. And I think that there's just some really smart things that they've done here. So in this little pouch thing right here, you have space for things like batteries. I believe that they mark it that it's definitely like weatherproof. So you can see you have like the weatherproof zippers here. And then something like this is great for things like your keys. They have this little thing here, which you know helps to specifically just latch on because I have definitely left my keys places and they've fallen out of bags, which is super annoying. And then another random thing about this bag, and this is probably gonna be kind of embarrassing to do, but if you don't wanna wear it as a satchel, one of kind of the nice things you can do is just wear it like a fanny pack. And then, you know, at times, having all your stuff right here and just being able to grab, 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 um, you know, might not be my vibe exactly. I could feel like I'm, uh, you know, gonna get in line for some tokens for my kids at Disneyland, but it's still, uh, from a functional standpoint, can do that really well and then, you know, the fanny pack's kind of coming back, so rock and roll. 
solid bag. And obviously thanks to my good friends at Moment for making something rad. And then my last two bags are definitely a little bit different. And these are kind of like a part of a modular system in a way. But this is basically like the photographer's tool pouch. The thing that I love the most about this bag, other than just its low, you know, form factor and stuff, and it's just like, I can just shove the things that I need in. It's like a minimalist setup where I can stick a small flash in here. I can stick something here. Usually I put lenses here. I do wish there was a way to have these lens pouches maybe be a little bit smaller so I could stick multiple lenses instead of two large ones. It'd be really nice to have four smaller ones. Um, I do wish there was a little bit less metal to be kind of clinking around. It kind of makes some noise at times and that's kind of one of my down downsides about this bag. But the biggest thing about this is that these are the camera straps that I use when I do weddings and elopements. This little thing converts to this. And then when you're carrying this, you can either carry it on your lower back and then your cameras can be behind you or you can carry it on your front at times and using almost like a pouch in the front. So it's definitely been the thing that I've actually used the most at weddings this year, just because I've been trying to, I guess, pare down my kit a little bit more. Um, and anytime I'm flying, the nice thing about this bag is that I can just fold it up and stick it in either my check luggage or into a front part of a backpack or something like that. And then when I get to my destination, I can pull this out and I have a bag to use, which is definitely phenomenal. And then the last bag in this bunch is another kind of like modular bag that I've done a full review on. And this is the Holdfast Sightseer bag. It is definitely a lot bigger and kind of more comparable to that larger Ona Brixton bag. Um, it's got this back pocket here. It's got this with these large pockets here. Everything is just super well made and thick. And um, what I do love about it as well is that like, you know, it's just all black, it's super minimal. Um, they also sell some attachments that you can add to the front of this if you want some other pouches and whatnot. It's the bag that I would take to a wedding where I'm wearing uh, more like dress shoes and less like, you know, Danner boots or blunt stones or something. Super cool bag. It's definitely a not a cheap bag by any means, but it does the same thing where it modularity is kind of the key here. But overall, the, the point basically is to wear it, you know, on, on your back um, and have access to your stuff kind of behind you. And it's a large bag that can fit a lot of stuff. And it's definitely something that you can stick kind of everything in and then also use as that thing. At the times where I don't need to bring a backpack, I shove everything in here and then pull it out, shoot, and then can kind of pull the stuff out. Works really well, really love this bag and, uh, you know, kind of highly recommend it as well. So thanks so much for watching. Again, I've used all of these at various things from personal stuff to professional stuff. All of these have been on actual shoots with me and have worked well. It sort of just depends on your budget, your style, what you're looking for, all that kind of stuff. So if you want any specific recommendations, again, I would love to help. And then if you want to pick any of these up and figure out what the prices are today for them and which ones are available, obviously the links will be down in the description. And if you like this video, please consider giving it a like, especially if you've made it to the end, you know, toss like some sort of bag emoji or camera emoji or something into the end because it's always fun to see who actually makes it all the way. Subscribe if you haven't already. And if you've made it this far, you know, subscribing wouldn't be that bad of an idea. So thanks again, and I will see you all on the next one. Bye.